All right, here's the bell work for the day. The measures of the angles of a triangle are shown in the figure below. It's just, yeah, this one. I wish it was just a regular number, but it's not. And uh, what we have learned already in this unit is that the three angles on the inside of a triangle, they're all going to add up to 180. So I'm going to take those three angles, okay? We've got the 55-degree angle. We've got a 41-degree angle. Then we got that kind of an oddball one there which is a math expression. And I don't know anyone that would really describe an angle this way, but I'm not saying you can't. We're going to add those together, and we will expect that to equal 180 degrees. If it wasn't 180 degrees, then we wouldn't have a triangle. Or a really jacked up one, I guess. Or it just doesn't close. Whatever. Okay? So all I'm going to do is, is I'm going to treat this like an equation, and then, then that will help me to solve for x. Now, in most equations, we'd look for distribution first, which I do not see, which means I'm going to go straight to combining like terms, which I have constants, 55, 41, and 12. I'm just going to put that in my calculator, and my calculator did that for me at 108 right there. Now, we still got the 3x, right, which is positive, so we'll add that in there. And this, yeah, still equals 180. But now I end up with a two-step equation that I will then solve. So uh, to do that, I'm going to get rid of the 108 so I can isolate my 3x by subtracting 108. It's just if I do this to one side, yeah, I got I to gotta do it to both sides, okay? But this will allow me to drop the 3x, which is now isolated. And that's going to equal 180 minus 108 which should come out to 72. Last thing I need to do here is to make the coefficient of x a 1. 1x, one right? So how do I do that? I divide by 3. Just if I do it to one side, i got to do it on the other side. So remember, this is just a different way to show division with the fraction line. 3 divided by 3 is 1. But what about 72 divided by 3? What do we get there? I got 24. Okay, and this is the value of x for us. That's all we need on this problem. Of course, you, you, we could have figured out the measure of this angle, which, uh, well, I guess we, we could have used the formula for this, but no need. We were just solving for x. You could just replace the x in here as well, and then that would have given you the measure of this angle. Whatever the case, here's our two objectives for the day. I can find the perimeter and area of rectangles. Yeah, just rectangles for the day. And the second one, I can find missing side lengths from perimeter and area of these rectangles. So yeah, that's a good one as well. Take uh, 30 seconds and copy these down, please. All right, just so we understand these two words, which I, I, I hope you've heard them before. If not, that's okay. Perimeter is just the length around the shape. So if we see a shape like this one, it's just how far is it to go all the way around the shape, which means all we're gonna do is just add the four lengths together. Okay, the width, the length, the width, and the length. I like to see all four of those when I'm adding for the perimeter of rectangles, at least by hand. There are formulas to do this, but as long as you understand that it's just the, the length around the shape, then the outside of the shape specifically, then you're good. If for some reason it was a triangle, so like a rectangle here, we see we're going to add four side lengths together for the perimeter. If it was a triangle, then you'd be adding three lengths together. All right, now that's the perimeter. The, the area is the surface space taken up by the shape, meaning... If you were to look at this rectangle right here, it's kind of like what I would do if I were to try to color this in. And no, staying between the lines is not really my forte, but whatever. Okay, so the green space right here, the green space or surface, is the area of that shape. Well, how do you find that? You just take the length and the width and multiply the two together. Now, if for some reason you wanted to make a math nerd really angry, I, I don't get too worked up by this stuff, but... They, want, they usually would want the length to be longer of the two sides. So if for some reason you said, hey, this is the length here and that's the width, uh, you, could, you, could, you could make some math nerd's brain explode. It's not very pretty, but uh, it sometimes can be fun to do. I'll leave that to you, though, okay? All right, now uh, it says down here triangles are half length times width. Uh, although we're not going to see triangles today, the reason why this works is because what we end up doing... Uh, just just kind of like it shows in the formula right here. It's length times width, which is the exact same as a rectangle. It's just that it's cut in half, okay? 
And this would be true not just for rectangles, but for what we call parallelograms, which a rectangle is one type of. I suppose I'm saying a lot of stuff you guys don't care about, but in the future you may not see triangles that look perfectly like this one, which we call right triangle. However, uh, they, don't, they don't have to be rectangles. You can take a parallelogram, cut it in half, and you have a, a triangle. Either way, it's half the length times the width. Uh, but again, I'm just pointing this out. We're not going to see these today, but just know in the future we probably will. Now, the last thing we need to talk about on this perimeter and area stuff, perimeter is going to have the same exact label as we see with the sides. Okay. So they're, we're looking at lengths. So if you're looking at American, you're looking at inches, feet, yards, miles. There's more, but I can't think of any. If you're looking at something metric, meters, um, kilometers, millimeters, centimeters, stuff like that. Uh, but area, though, we can see is kind of like the, the surface of this shape right here. Uh, what this means is that what you can do, now that I think you'd want to, but you can kind of divide this up into a bunch of squares. And so we, I know these aren't squares because my drawing sucks. But the area is uh, is actually going to uh, uh, the area is labeled in in square units. Okay, so again, I'm just using units here, but they on the assignment they're going to give you either centimeters, meters, inches, feet, yards, something like that. You'd have to say it's in square yards because each of these squares is whatever the square unit is. Okay, for example. If for some reason uh, this was showing here is four meters, then a square here would be, have a one meter. It'd be a one meter by one meter square like this, assuming my drawing was better. But that's why we have to label these in square units. It helps us to distinguish between perimeter and area. Okay, so let's look at these two uh, values that they want us to find. We want to find the perimeter of the rectangle and we also want to find the area of the rectangle well perimeter is where we take all the side lengths and just add them together okay now even though they're not showing all the side lengths the unique thing about rectangles is that opposite side lengths are exactly the same meaning that this one would be four centimeters there in the bottom and the right side is four nine point five centimeters which means the one on the left is also nine point five centimeters now the reason why i'm doing this is more for my benefit but it allows me then to take the four sides, right? We got the four. We got the 9.5, and I'm doing this going clockwise, starting with the top there, and then another four, and then another 9.5. This is all four side lengths. All I need to do now is just add them together because when I add these together, that will be my perimeter. And although you could do this by hand, you just put on the calculator 9 plus 4 plus 9.5 plus 4 plus 9.5 on my calculator it gives me 27 now when you're doing this by hand 27 is not okay on the assignment you want to worry about this because everything's already labeled we need labels whenever we're working with word problems that have labels in them like in this one 27 centimeters would be the most correct answer just remember on canvas you don't actually have to label that all right, so the area is length times width, and like I said, generally speaking, the longest side is the length, but right here, you know, if you wanted to say, well, you got four as your length and your width is 9.5, that really doesn't bother me, not at all. Okay, so four times 9.5. Uh, when I multiply these two together, it's gonna give me the area. Now, we gotta be careful because we do have labels with this. So my calculator does give me 38. Okay, now this is the numerical part of the answer, but, uh, like we talked about in that last slide, is that uh, the, the area is made up of lots of squares. So the, the area is going to be labeled in squares. Uh, well, what type of squares are we talking about? Well, we know that the labels are in centimeters, so you can just say square centimeters, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to keep it like this. We know from... 
uh, from using exponents. If we see something like this, it actually reads as centimeters squared. It's the same thing as saying square centimeters. But uh, I'm going to avoid that for now just because it doesn't matter. We're going to, I, I'm going to keep this as squ uh, square centimeters because uh, it's important to understand we're looking at a bunch of squares inside of the shape. All right, so there's our answer there, 38 square centimeters. All right, so finding the area of a square isn't too bad. I think you guys have done that before, length times width. Uh, but on this one, we see that we have the area. The problem is we have a missing side length. And it's just the side length that we need on this one. We're down to the nearest tenth if it's necessary. Well, uh, let's find out. All right, so this, this is what I need for area, right? And in fact, I'll just show that this is the formula for our area. We'll need that. Again, it doesn't really matter which of the sides you say is length and width. Uh, I'm going to say the first one there is my length. Uh, again, if you said it's the width, that's okay. We'll see that it kind of works out better for us if it's the first one, whatever you say is length or width. And then the area they gave us already at uh, 53.1 square feet, right? So what we're looking for here is the width, which we don't know. Okay, so you could put a question mark right here, but... This is an equation that we need to solve. We can use one principle of equality to solve this. Okay, and that will give me my width, right? Because I just want, I don't want a 11.3 W's, I just want one W. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'd have to divide both sides by the 11.3 there. Okay, yeah, again, if you do it on one side, you got to do the other side. So in my calculator, I've got 53... 53.1 divided by 11.3. Enter, and it gives me a pretty ugly decimal right there. 4.69911544. But it did say it around the nearest tenth, which for me would be 4.7. Okay, now the answer is not 4.7. Remember to label it, right, just like we saw back here. It's 4.7 feet. If it were an area, then we would label it in square feet. You see here, again, they've used the exponent right there. Uh, it may be better for us while we're getting used to this to see it as square feet, though. But you, you'll see it like this on the assignment. All right, how about this one? Same idea. They've, they've given us the area. We have a missing uh, side length right here and the one that was given to us. It's a rectangle, so we're expecting this to be length times width, right? So let's see that formula there. There it is. Doesn't matter which one you say is length or width. I just like to say the one that's given is length doesn't matter to me but length showing is 0 0.6 centimeters so uh, let's put that in there 0.6 i don't really need the label again we don't know what the width is although it is being multiplied and this would then be the area which was given as 1.2 centimeters okay so there's my formula you know in fact i'm going to move that 0 0.6 a little bit closer just so it resembles an equation better for us. 0.6 W equals 1.2. All I need to do is solve this equation for W. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, again, I, I want this to be 1 W, not 0.6 W. So to do that, I will divide it by itself, the coefficient 0.6. Just if I do it to one side, I must do it to the other side as well. So 1.2 divided by 0.6 on my calculator says just 2. Okay, but again, uh, don't forget your label on these answers, at least when you're doing it by hand. Again, on the assignment, you will not have to label these. But when you're doing it by hand, you always should. So if this length right here is 0 0.6 centimeters and the area was 1.2 centimeters squared, the other length or width, whatever one you want to call it, would have to be 2 centimeters right there. Now, after looking at the assignment, um, that's all the information you're going to need for it. So um, you can look at those three examples and just kind of piggyback off of that in order to find uh, any of the missing side lengths from the rectangles that are given, but also finding the perimeter and area from that first example we did, okay? So there's our objectives. We did both. Hopefully we feel pretty good about those. So now you should be able to start on this assignment, which is 10.4 on Canvas. Yeah, go ahead and get started on that one, and uh, 
Good luck. See you guys later.